I'm Steve Arnold, founder of ESI, an inventor of the continuously variable displacement engine and compressor drive system. I would like to thank the Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Vehicle Technology Office for their financial support getting the CVD system designed, prototyped, and tested. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the concept and its benefits as well as show you some of the progress that we've made. The drive system can be used for engines or compressors. To fit the scope of the work into the DOE SBIR Phase 2 budget, it was necessary to prototype it as a compressor first. The forces and loads used in the design process were those of an engine, so at the conclusion of the project it could be converted to an engine without significant redesign. Now we'll see clips of the first prototype CVD compressor running and use simulation animations for a detailed explanation of how the mechanism works. Let's look at the rotating and reciprocating motions via a simulation animation. The crankshaft will rotate at constant speed and the stroke will change, starting at minimum stroke, transitioning to full stroke, and then back to minimum stroke. Even though the crankshaft rotates at constant speed, one can visually see the piston speed slow down and speed up. The piston forces are transferred to the nutating wobbler, which then transfers the force to the crankshaft. The wobbler must have a reaction connection to the crankcase, which is done via special anti-rotation gears. Neither gear rotates. One is stationary and one nutates around the crankshaft center line at a one-to-one -one ratio. The tricky part is that the angle between these gears varies depending on stroke. Now let's watch a cutaway chain stroke without the crankshaft rotating. As the hydraulic stroke control piston translates in the hydraulic cylinder, note that it captures the pivot plate, which is pinned to the crankshaft. This connection allows tilting of the piston as well as the capability to shift off center relative to the crankshaft center line. There are precisely matched degrees of freedom in the assembly, so parts motion is precise and repeatable. Also note the position of top dead center and bottom dead center as the stroke is changed. Top dead center moves to adjust the compression ratio to the desired value throughout the range of stroke. We can see the articulated balance weight move as the wedge cam changes the weight position axially and radially to adjust the balance during the stroke change. Every movement we have seen so far only happens when the stroke changes, so none of this has an impact on friction when the engine is running at a constant stroke and the velocities are a magnitude slower than the rotating or reciprocating velocities, so the stroke change movements represent very small friction power. Let's see a bit more testing now that we understand the basic function. The unit will start a minimum stroke, will change the back pressure several times, then move to max stroke, and again change the back pressure a couple of times.
Thanks for your attention, and I'm always interested in feedback, so send it to steve at esi-inc.us. Thank you.